The next thing that we will calculate is our range, which is one measure of variance uh, or how our data set appears to re revolve around the mean or what it looks like overall. Uh, the range is the largest number in our data set, which in this case, as we look up here to the ordered set, is 98. So it would be 98 minus the smallest number, and in this case, it is 42. Doing this calculation, of course, we can determine 98 minus 42 is 56. So our range in our data set is actually quite large, uh, going from 42 to 98, and it is 56. Now, of course, calculating a range is a very simple way of looking at how large your data set is or how far it spans. Uh, a more specific way would be to look at the variance and the standard deviation. Now, even though these are a little bit harder to calculate by hand, uh, they still can easily be done. And what we'll be doing here is calculating uh, the variance first, and then after that, the standard deviation is actually quite simple. So in this formula, you can see there's a lot of different x's, and we, of course, have the, the n's as well. But not to worry. I will explain what each one of those is. Now, you can see this n minus 1, or what is sometimes referred to as the degrees of freedom, here on the bottom, or in the denominator. So what we have here is 1 over n minus 1. Now, n minus 1, of course, we know what n is, right? n is 19. That's, of course, how many uh, data points we have. So we have 19 minus 1. Now, this stands alone by itself. Now, we could probably already reduce that to 1 over 18. But what I want to do is actually go through and put in some of the other numbers. Now, I'm putting this asterisk here just to represent that we will be multiplying that by whatever else we have within this next bracket. Now, the sum of x squared, which you can see right here, um, is quite easy to find out because what we're doing here is actually taking each x or each data point and multiplying it by itself or squaring it. And then we will add all of those squared numbers together. So what we will do is actually take, and I'll just write this down here below, is we'll take 42 times 42. That's our first number in our data set. So we'll square that, okay? Add that to 52 times 52, so on and so forth, okay? Until we do all of those numbers, okay? So we're squaring each number, then adding them together, okay? So you can see that the square is here, which means we do that first before we sum them, okay? Now, the total of all of these, I've already calculated uh, what that would be, is 12,000, or sorry, 123,881. It's a very large number, okay? And it's expected it'll be a large number since we are actually squaring all of those and then adding them together. So this is our first number that we have in this bracket uh, or in this part of the equation. The next part uh, is above the n, and we see this is the sum of x, and that entire thing is encompassed in uh, brackets, or I'm sorry, um, yeah, in brackets. So what we have here is that we need to actually do this part. We have to sum things before we square them, okay? So what we must do here is really simply take what we had calculated up here for our mean. So you can see we have the same thing up here, sum of x. So what we can do is take 1503, square that, so that's really 1503 times itself, and divide that by n, which we should now know, of course, is 19, okay? So this is what we have to calculate. So 1 over 19 minus 1, we can reduce that down, of course, that's going to be 1 over 18. And we're going to multiply that by, of course, what we have right here. Now what I will do is actually leave the 123,881 in and calculate what this next part will be. This 1503 uh, to the second power or squared or multiplied by itself, whichever way you want to put it, um, that number is 225,000, or sorry, 2,259,009 and 9. Okay, so that number squared is this number here, okay? And then we have to divide that by 19 as well, okay? So 200 and tw or 2259009 divided by 19, 1188952.21, okay? 
So again, we still have quite a few numbers left to calculate. So we still have 1 over 18 multiplied whatever our difference is that we have within these brackets. So if we subtract those two numbers, we end up getting 4,985.79. OK? So the very last step that we have here is to take that number we just obtained, that 4,985.79 and multiply that by 1 over 18, which really means that you're dividing by 18, okay? So 4985.79 divided by 18 is 276.99, rounding to, of course, the two decimal places. So this number right here is our variance. Now, as I mentioned before, once we calculate the variance, standard deviation is actually quite easy because the only thing we're doing different is actually taking the square root. So you see here we have the square root sign, which means all we have to do is take the square root of 276.99. And if we do that, we obtain 16.64. So this is our standard deviation. Now, if for some reason you're working with a very simple calculator, you haven't obtained a, you know, a, um, a master calculator yet, and it doesn't have a square root function, don't worry. If it does have a function that allows you to take a number to a particular power, um, so let's say, for example, it will allow you to do x to the y power, what you could do is actually do to the 0.5 power, and that will give you the square root. So hopefully this tutorial has been useful in uh, demonstrating to you the different calculations because I know with the variance, we can sometimes get a little mind-boggling as to what it means, the difference between the sum of x squared and then the sum of x squared. Uh, so hopefully this was useful.